Haven't seen a good in a wood story thread in a while, let's have one. Pick related more like this guy, let's get some creepy, spooky, or weird times out in the woods. Be at a party with friends, everyone dressed up as knights because we are a load of geeks. Starting to get drunk but not there yet. Turn around and there is another knight there, sitting by the fire with me. I think, well shit, he must have been brought by one of the others, talk to him for a while he doesn't say much, just the occasional grunt, tell him about the shit going down lately what with my job getting shifty, and having just gotten married. Occasionally raises his glass for more mead. Get up to go to the woods to answer nature call, turn around and the new night is gone. Asked who he was the next day, and nobody had any freaking idea what the hell I was talking about, everyone thought I was drunk as hell, talking to myself. Afterwards my life really picked up and I'm in a good position presently. But who the hell did I spend all that time talking to? In a woods thread. No in a woods stories. Guess I'll go. Be on Google Maps. Exploring street view in my neighborhood. Find woods on the outskirts of town, place I haven't gone before. Like 30 minutes away, might as well. Drive to woods, plan on staying for an hour and exploring. Be exploring for 15 to 20 minutes when I realize that there are a lot of holes in the ground. Holes are very deep and only like 2 inches wide. That's freaking weird. Step into a clearing. Almost fall into the deepest hole ever. It's really freaking wide. In the middle of the woods. Bitch the hell out of there. I really don't know what could have caused it. Post it in the other thread so I may as well post it here too. Be in Virginia out in a woods. Be getting dark. Walking home out of woods hear a loud screaming noise, literally sounds like a woman is being tortured. Nope nope nope. Calm down enough to realize it's probably just a big ass bobcat. Almost out of woods when I hear the screaming sound again, still creepy but not as bad as it was. Get about halfway home and screaming sound does not get quieter seems to be about the same distance away. The entire trip, nerves are strung out to hell and back. Jumping at every pop. Get almost out of woods and hear the scream again. This time it isn't just a random scream, this time instead of just being a whale, it actually sounds like it is trying to say something. The screaming thing says the most freaking creepy way I have ever heard in my life, run. So I noped the hell out of there as fast as my legs could carry me. Wishing I had my gun instead of my bow, I don't hunt that area without a gun anymore. Posted it in the other thread but hell, I support in a wood stories. Here girl being murdered. Run. Don't call cops. Quite a gentleman. I'm a reenactor too. Blanks flash like a Chris Chan. More so than live ammunition. They're a lot noisier too. Blank firing adapters are easy as hell to get for any decently common firearm. They range from like $8 for com block surplus training BFAs for AKs and such. To $100 plus US made fancy low profile BFAs. I think you have a very vague understanding of how a blank works. A BFA doesn't plug the barrel. What it does is constrict it to about 3 millimeters. Speaking of BFAs, I have a somewhat related story. Be in the early 90s. Out doing World War II reenactment. On the German side as false Germjägers. Good day of firefights, driving around in a Kugel wagon while in firefights. And napping during firefights. Night falls. Sitting around fire with Buddy. He was our machine gunner and I was his loader. He's got a semi-auto converted MG42 because he has far too much time and money on his hands. I have a carabiner 98k. Here, in a shitty German accent. Americaner. 12 o'clock. American airborne dude wanders out of the bushes in front of us. Quiet bastard. We didn't hear or notice him tramping through the brush. The actual reenactment ended long ago. Next engagement is tomorrow, so we don't light him up. 
he walks up to our campfire and sits down. And says. This time with a standard Pacific Northwest accent, Tim, wanna have a cigarette with me? My name is Dom, close enough. Wait why the hell is he addressing me by name? I've never even seen this dude before. Must be a new guy, the other Americans probably named us. Ja. I moment. Produce cigarettes and matches. Hand a cigarette to him, and one to my buddy. Strike a match and light my own, then pass matches around. American dude is smoking hard. Like taking a huge drag every second. Practically shoving the cigarette into his face. He's done with it in like 30 seconds. Drops the butt on the ground. Doesn't extinguish it. I figure it's a combination of him probably being drunk like us, and the long marches. After we finish our smokes. The dude just sits there and stares at the fire silently for like 5 minutes. So what's your name? Johan. You can call me John if you want. There's a guy on the American side named Johan who goes by John. Except this isn't him, and I've known the other Johan for like 3 years at this point. Hell of a coincidence, did you meet the other Johan? He just freaking smiles at us. Not even a smile, more like pulling his lips back like a growling dog. Hear a bunch of crashing in the bushes behind where creepy John came out. American Airborne walks out of the bushes, visibly annoyed. Hey asshole. Would you freaking mind giving us back Tim's kit? That shit isn't cool. He's freaking freezing, it's 35 degrees out looks over to us. And why the hell didn't you turn him around as soon as he got back here? I told you guys to stop kicking letting teenagers into your group. Referring to an incident in which a drunk 16 year old nearly burned down airborne number no. two's tent. Dropped German accents. We very rarely go out of character unless someone gets injured. Dude. We don't freaking know this guy, we thought he was one of yours. Creepy dude is mock reloading his rifle. Like moving his hand over to his bandolier, not actually pulling anything out. And putting the nothing into the breech of his M1 rifle. Does this like three times while we all just freaking stare at him. Suddenly jolts upright, starts laughing like crazy. More like an inhuman cackle. We all take a step back. Airborne number 2 and I unsling our rifles while my buddy grabs his MG. Buddy shouts drop that rifle and get the hell on the ground. We're calling the sheriff's department. We all think he's a freaking inbred axe murderer or something. Airborne number 2 is known for being a ballsy dude, makes a grab for his rifle. Suddenly he just isn't there. Scan right. Scan left. He's 6 inches to my left grinning at me. His mouth looks like it grew two inches wider. Eyes are all red, like all of his blood vessels popped. Arms are hanging like six inches past the end of his uniform sleeves. Dive backwards onto ground and fire a blank at him simultaneously. Flash blinds me for a fraction of a second. Work the bolt on my rifle furiously, about to fire another shot before I realize he's gone. We all scan. He's now in a bush about 10 meters to our 130. All three of us light him up. At this point. The other six guys in our unit are out of their tents. What the hell are you doing you goddamn what the hell is that? Dude is hunched over, heaving like he's about to throw up. Bolts back up. Let's out a guttural scream. Says, in what I can only compare to a mimicry of human speech I've am gonna goot you. You cray out suns you you bitches. Everyone else scrambles for their guns and starts firing. Our sniper produces the .44 revolver he carries for bare defense. Fires a live round at the goddamn thing as it just stands there. It curls over from the impact, howls in pain. And dashes out into the bushes uphill to our right. We all march over. Weapons raised, to check if there's any blood. No freaking blood. Our guy is adamant that he hid it. We search around in the bushes. And eventually find the rifle and helmet it took from the real Tim. Find the bandolier torn off a little farther up. With a bullet hole in it. 
guttural screaming from what sounds like maybe 30 meters away. We all freaking book it back to the campsite. Just as the rest of the Americans are arriving. American sergeant walks up, fuming. Hey, thanks for freaking waking us all up with your drunken bullshit. Tim Actual is there too. Wrapped in a blanket and wearing someone's spare boots. Sergeant notices we're all pale as hell. Cools off a bit. You guys alright? You look a bit shaken up. Describe situation to him as NG Buddy breaks out his Motorola microtac and calls 911. Wait for sheriff to arrive. Form defensive perimeter and fix bayonets. Wait for sheriff to arrive. We hear the sirens in the distance. Sprint the full mile to where the road ends. Arrive with rifles slung and hands up. Three squad cars. Five deputies plus the sheriff step out. All are armed with shotguns. Get the feeling that this has happened before. They politely ask us to unsling and put down our weapons. We reluctantly comply. They tell us that they'll escort us up to our camps. And that we need to take down our tents, pack up, and get out of the area immediately. Sheriff explains as we walk that they get a few calls like this every year. The thing has never hurt anyone yet. Yet. They've been trying to get the whole are closed off and clear cut. Forest Service doesn't see shape shifting murder demons as a good enough reason. Screw the Forest Service. Get back to camp. Pack up. Do the same at the American camp. Hear that same guttural scream. Really freaking close. Sheriff and deputies start emptying shotguns towards the noise. Screams continue. We all book it back to the cars slash jeeps slash kuba wagon. Hurl our gear into the cars. Screams still coming closer. Start cars. As we're turning around. Headlight beams illuminate the thing flicking standing in the middle of the trail. Twitching. Deputies lean out of their car windows and fire the rest of their ammo at it as we collectively get the hell out of Dodge. About two more miles down the road. Sheriff signals for us to pull over. Explains the whole Wendigo legend to us. Tells us I'm not saying that that's what you saw up there. But if I were you. I wouldn't go back there if you gave me a million dollars. Sagely advice. Me. Buddy and our two other tagalong stop in at a diner to get coffee and discuss. We can figure out no rational explanation. Americans lost about $400 to $500 worth of gear up there. Drive home is uneventful. Unable to sleep that night though. Never return to that godforsaken place. Continue reenacting elsewhere. Several years ago in college in Northern California. Beautiful lush redwood forests. Used to go on hikes all the time. Local dude told me to be careful because of hidden pot farms. Apparently they put booby traps around them and will shoot trespassers. One day I'm deep in a woods hiking through some shallow canyons and I see what looks like a deer blind made of branches and leaves. Sudden bad feeling. Hair standing on end. Stop in my tracks and stare at it in silence for several minutes. Seems empty and realize it's after deer season, so I cautiously approach to check it out. Get up to it and look around it and inside. It's empty. Decide to chill out and eat my packed lunch while hanging out in it. Hear a weird buzzing sound like electricity or something. Look around but can't tell where it's coming from. Suddenly got really dizzy like I'd pounded a fifth of vodka or something. Next thing I know I'm waking up on the ground, head hurts like shit and I'm disoriented. It's nearly dark, so at least three hours have passed, no watch, cell was dead. Get up and stagger around in a circle trying to figure out WTF is going on. Some reason there's snot coming out of my right ear, WTF. Really freaked out in that point and decide to GTFO. Dark as hell by the time I get back to my car. Still no idea WTF the hell happened. Had a headache for days, and my right ear has been freaked up ever since. Kind of a lame story, but it's my only spooky in a woods experience and it still freaks me out. I live in Lima, Peru, 
When I was 18 I used to drive out of town and went to my family's summer house which is 97 kilometers south of Lima. I always took a rural road so I won't have pay for the highway toll which is freaking expensive. This rural road crosses a little town called Lurin, which is known for having largest cementaries and some wooden areas. One day me and my girlfriend decided to go to the house during winter cause nobody would be there to disturb us, the problem is that during winter this roads are lonely as hell. We were driving down this rural roads close to 10 pm, and we noticed a man's side of the road waving his hands like trying to get our attention, so I decided to pull over in order to help him. Girlfriend says I should stay in the car since it could be a mugger trying to rob us, I should have listened to her because what I saw that day still messes up with my mind and everything I know was logical. As I approached to this guy who looked like a hobo in his mid-forties I noticed something strange about him, like an unnatural body movement, I yell at him asking if he needed any help. This guy's turns in my direction and started to walk towards me, the thing is that he had his mouth open like trying to scream but no sound was coming from him. He gets closer and closer at a very slowly pace, and I notice he wasn't walking, he was floating several inches above the ground. I heard girlfriend screaming, I nope the hell out of there with my pants all pissed and run to the car, hit the gas and return to the main highway. To this day I don't know what I saw that day. Girlfriend said she screamed because she saw this guy not only floating but with his clothes covered in blood or anything like that, I didn't notice that at the moment. Needless to say I never went that road again. The night. Be driving in my car, on my way back home from a shitty work trip. Shit, I really need to piss. Thank God I'm on a forest road, lots of trees to piss behind. Park car on the side of the road. Walk 5 meters into the forest. Other cars driving by on the road. Shit, I can't go like that, what if they see me? Freaking shy bladder. Walk about 50 more meters into the forest. Freaking pitch black. Use my cell's flash as a flashlight. Pick a tree, pull out cock, take a piss. Ah so much better. Hear a twig crack somewhere around me. Pretty much generic forest noises, but since it's pitch black around, it can be pretty scary. Turn around to walk back to my car. Can't see the road through the trees. What? I'm not that far from the road and I saw it just fine before I started taking a piss. Concentrate on my hearing. Realize I can't hear any cars either, but that's impossible, it's fairly frequented road. Start walking back in the direction I came from. Walk for a while. I walked at least 200 meters now. Start shitting pants. Finally start hearing cars again. See the road between trees. Walk out of the forest, see my car. I walked at least 400 meters. I didn't get turned around or lost, I walked in exactly the same direction as I came from and I left the forest in the exactly same spot as I entered it, so I wasn't walking in circles. Not very scary, but I don't really have any other personal in a woods stories. I don't know what the hell they are called skin walkers or goatmen, but this is what happened to me about three years ago. Still freaking scares me to this day. If anyone can help me make sense of the end it would be appreciated, I still have no clue what happened. B15. First camping trip alone with a, a few friends and friends of friends, can't really remember how many, under seven, not really sure. All of us god cyclists, enjoy going on long bike rides and shit. Decide in the summer halls to go cycle down to these big woods about 40 kilometers from where we live. As it's our first proper two day trip alone all really pumped and shit. So we cycled most of the day, left really early, like 4 am so we could have the afternoon to freak around, mostly along roads until we got the woods where there were mountain bike paths to follow. Get really far into the woods. It's one of those creepy plantation woods, where there are evergreens spaced really, really close together, occasionally there are these big holes in the ground like bomb holes, we assume they are there, because there is a military base nearby. Path begins to get really tight and get off the bikes and walk them until it just stops. Don't really know the area and quite tired, so some guy goes off to scout ahead while the rest of us rest. Weird smell in the area, like when you are preparing a steak mixed with singed hair. 
Guy sums back looking a bit weird and someone says is it good and he just says good. We lock the bikes against the trees, and put some leaves against them to try and hide them, camping not allowed in this area because it's a commercial plantation. Keep walking, want to get as far from path as possible to minimize x of getting caught, kind of stupid to worry since this wood is freaking huge, and the area being chopped down is like 10 miles away. Find suitable camping spot, little stream quite close by and it's inside one of the bomb holes. Put up the tents and screw around. Everyone having a good time, just being teenagers. Basically drinking, playing with the fire and bitching about the poopal who didn't come the boy who went ahead just sits there looking depressed, I don't recognize him but assume he's just one of the people who I don't know so well's friends. Still, just sits there, doing this weird chewing thing when people talk to him. Around 11.30 people start to get tired and end up going into the tents. I stay out with my with my friend, let's call him Sam, and weird guy who went ahead. Just sit there talking to Sam for ages, we're good old friends so have a lot to talk about. Weird guy just sits there until we say what's up. He just looks at with this weird expression and says we need some more wood. I look at the fire and it is a bit down so him and Sam head up out of the bomb hole to go find some wood. I sit and wait but they take freaking ages to get back, so I just go to bed assuming they're fine because drunk logic. About 12.20 I hear a screech, like a weird ass cat and a woman mixed together so a few of us get out of the tent. Shine torches around camp for a bit, assume it was a bird of some sort. I still hear that screech and even at the time I knew it wasn't a bird, THT noise was like listening to someone dying it was so horrible. Suddenly remember my friend and ask if I own has seen them. They say no so we look in the tents and yep he's not there. Worried as shit, maybe weird guy struggle snuggled or something. Rescue party assembled, with two knives between the three of us and the other two pussies stay behind. So we exit the bomb hole and walk around for a bit, shouting their names until we hear a weird stalted voice shout here and that smell comes back. Uneasy.jpg Walk slowly over to the voice but no one is there. Too freaking scary form.jpg Hear the same voice shout here again king from further away. Im like no way but one other guy thinking we should. He starts walking forward but then we hear noises, like something was walking around in the wood. And then we saw something, it was big and low to the ground and was where we heard here coming from. Before I could call out to the other two guys it was gone. Say to them, any of you see that? They like no WTF? I'm scared shitless and my semi-drunk brain forgets my friend and just wants back to the tents. One guy says we wait for a bit, just to see so we sit down and just shine our torches around. Me hoping whatever I saw was my imagination. Smell has gone now. After like 10 minutes head back to camp, we get near enough to see the light from the campfire and then that smell comes back, stronger than before, making us gag. Walk into campsite, closer we get, stronger the smell becomes. See Sam and weird guy just standing there, looking at the tents. Turn and see us and wave, kind of weirdly. We say hi and then ask where the hell were you. They say that they came back to the tents after they saw us sit down, because they thought we'd given up. Sam looks weird, isn't acting normal at all. Mind wanders back to all the creepypastas I've read about this sort of shit and then I piece it together. The smell. Guy going ahead turning weird, Sam acting weird. The screeches. The thing I saw. It starts to make sense and I feel so freaking scared. I know something is very wrong with the weird we but am not so sure about Sam. I've known him for years and we've been bros since I was 11. We ask them what happened and they say they saw us sit down and went back to camp because they thought we'd given up. I say why didn't you just come over to us and then they both just look at me dumbly. We got them stumped. We just sit there for a bit and those two just stare at us. We ask where the other two pussies who stayed behind are and they say they went back to the bike's tog home. We're just like WTF? At like 1 o'clock? I start suspect that maybe they were scared away or maybe. They. Go back to tent with Sam and start to talk, well I do. He just laughs and repeats what I saw with different words. Test him about things we did when we were younger like when he set fire to this bright orange bag I had, which he hated. He just laughed and said it was fun. 
I asked him what color the bag was and he didn't know. No wazy. This wasn't him, he always tells this Satri and teases me about that bag. I feel so in danger inside and just pretend to be asleep. I fall asleep and then wake to see him doing this thing, like he's laughing but not smiling and no noise. I just keep my eyes half open and am too scared to move. I really have no clue what's going on. Eventually I fall asleep again and wake up in the morning. My friend isn't there and the tent is open WTF? All the guys are outside eating breakfast. Ask them about last night. Apparently I walked out the bomb hole essaying something about firewood and didn't come back. Sam had woken up next to me in the morning and assumed I had got lost and find my way back really late. All of them agree. So we all head home early because no one us wanted to shit in the woods and then just get back to the summer holidays. The three guys who were my bros who were there have never really been the same since then, they just don't really talk and have basically lost all contact with me. They did ask if we could go camping there again but I was like no way. Something did happen that night, I know it, I remember it no matter how much they call me mad about it. If anyone has an experience like this tell me because I really am not mad. Those guys were good friends to me and Sam was like my top bro and now they are like. Five years ago, myself and four other friends, another guy and three girls, thought it would be fun to play with a Ouija board in a cemetery. I say Ouija board, but it was actually a psychic circle anyway, we didn't want to get caught doing this so we went to an old remote cemetery out in the woods, just off of a back road. Obviously we went at night, so it was about midnight when we got there. Parking outside the gates, got our flashlights and went in. Approaching the first row of graves we noticed that one of them had been half uncovered, the grave hadn't been like this long, in fact, we were pretty positive that we had interrupted whoever was doing it, so we looked around a little, checked the woods and made sure whoever was there had gone, and afterwards we continued as planned. We set up the board south of the disturbed grave, and began asking it questions. I'll say now that I don't believe in ghosts, but you can make what you want of the following events, like I said, we were asking it questions, though nothing too exciting was happening at first, but soon the pointer started sitting over the word, earth, before sliding north off of the board toward the uncovered grave, this happened twice before we realized what it was asking of us, so we asked do you want us to fill in your grave? At which point it answered, yes, we all then looked at each other for a second with WTF expressions on our faces. What happened next is very cliche, but it's what happened, so there we were thinking WTF, when suddenly lightning lit up the sky, followed by a massive roar of thunder and heavy rain, so we packed up the board before it got damaged, went to the grave, put all of the unearthed soil back in, and left. The drive home was especially creepy considering the sudden rain brought a thick low fog that covered all the roads. I still remember seeing something weird in the fog though, and the others saw it as well, a pillar of fog about 5 foot tall, that resembled a human form. Like I said, I don't believe in ghosts, I think the fog was just weird fog, and I think that one of the others wanted to cover the grave up, or was being funny. The creepiest thing is that someone was freaking with a grave, but weird stuff happens in the woods down south. I've been an outdoorsy since I took my first steps, grew up with a huge forest right across the road. This forest had loads of deer, foxes, some moose and occasional lone wolf being sighted. Since the age of like six I started wandering into the forest, spent hours picking berries, building little forts out of branches and logs, sitting in trees, watching animals pass by and just generally enjoying the nature around me. Yes, I raised myself into becoming a little hippie fag anyway, when I was in my early twenties I moved into a house with like five of my friends. Collective living, we were like a family. Our family had three dogs, all were lab mixes. Went for a walk with my buddy Peter and one of the dogs. Peter had grown up in the city and to him this suburban collection of trees with man-made paths was to him considered the deep, dark forest. We take the dog, Bella a beautiful, brown female with a tough, yet kind personality. Enter the woods, let Bella off the leash since it was in the middle of the night with no chance of meeting people. We walk for like 30 minutes, chatting, we were quite far into what I used to think was a small forest. Hear a cry in the distance, sounds like a terrified woman. 
Peter stops, I laugh at him, it's just a horny fox calling for a mate. Bella is just busy sniffing around, we continue for a few steps. Hear another eerie call from the other side of the path. Peter tries to play it cool but he is scared. I proceed being an asshole, giggle and answer the fox's calls with a similar scream. Peter starts walking faster, pissed off, wanting to get straight back home. The screams are getting louder, longer and more frequent from the left side of us. Bella, our normally chill dog froze up, lowers her head and growls into the dark. Here rattles in the bushes, sounds of animals moving in the forest. Alright, I swear this is where the screams start to sound like real words. Run. Run. No. Help. Ah. I stay collected since Peter is losing his shit now, I tell him we have to go home and call the cops since there might be a woman getting struggle snuggled or murdered in the woods. Right next to us, on both sides, Banshee screams, so loud our ears hurt, Bella bolts off. My blood curdles, so many chills down my spine that I actually feel sick. Peter grabs my arm, pulls me with him, we run, the screams are everywhere now. Run like crazy, when we reach the safety of the streetlights I stop Peter. We have to get Bella I said. Peter stares me straight in the eye and without a word grabs my arm and walks me home. Get home, none of the other residents are awake. Me and Peter lay down on the couches in the living room. When I notice him sleeping I let it all out and start crying like a fag. Next day other family member wakes us up saying she found Bella unharmed cowering underneath the stairs of the porch in the morning. We still tell ourselves it was just like 10 foxes screaming around us that night. 3 weeks ago, walking in the woods alone. Walked by a nice hemlock tree. Hear voice in my head, it wasn't audible, but I knew that it wasn't my own thought somehow. Climb the tree. What? Why should? Just climb. The goddamn tree. Okay voice in my head. Figure that I'm going freaking insane, so what have I got to lose? Climb tree. Wouldn't it be cool to see a Bigfoot right now? Sure would, voice in my head. At that exact moment. Big ass bear walks by my tree. It was during a warm spell. I guess the bastard decided to come out of hibernation for a day. Bears do that doesn't see slash smell me because animals never look up. Or at least he didn't care. He wanders away slowly. Kind of spooked because bears are scary? Sure as he'll ain't leaving my tree. Wait to leave until the bird comes. Okay voice in my head. Moments later a chickadee lands a foot away from me on my branch. Then flies. Nope down the tree and out of the woods. Haven't heard the voice since, and I've never heard voices before. I don't think I'm crazy. I don't browse slash x slash often, but I have some good stories to share with you. Tons of creepy stuff happens in the woods I live nearby. Story 1. B8. Exploring the woods alone with my dog one morning. Don't expect anybody to be back there so dog is off leash and running around, sniffing, whatever dogs do. I'm just following trails set by other animals. Using a stick to clear spider webs in my way slash suspicious looking plants, stuff like that. A creepy feeling gnaws at me the deeper I go into the woods. Hear what faintly sounds like a human screaming in the distance. Dog perks up and looks at where the scream came from too. It's coming from deep in the woods. I stand there unsure what to do. Feeling overly confident I decide to follow where the scream came from first time I'm in the woods alone too. Dog just went back to sniffing and running around. After what feels like half an hour I come across stuff that humans obviously left. A couch sitting in middle of nowhere. Broken bike hanging in a tree. Lots of beer bottles hanging around. Looks like some teen hideaway. Carefully walk around the beer bottles and avoid all of the crud laying around. After I walk a decent distance past it I hear a scream behind me, where I came from. Realize dog has been gone for a while. 
too scared to call my dog's name to draw attention to me so I just stand there awkwardly looking for any signs of anything. Kind of crouch down and walk back. Still bright daylight so I should be able to see anything off in the distance. Two minutes later I hear heavy breathing. It's getting closer, and fast. Start freaking the hell out, look around, swinging my stick like a maniac. Suddenly dog jogs out of bush, then past me. Bloodly murder, thought some madman was about to kill me. Scold the dog silently. Realize dog shouldn't be going ahead of me, runs to grab dog's collar and put leash on. Continue my ninja walk towards where I thought the scream came from. Didn't see or hear anything after what feels like an hour and half of searching. Walked back home, didn't tell my parents what I heard, cause they'd just freak out and not let me back in. Maybe a year after last incident so nine-ish at the time. Riding bike in the woods with my friend, morning again. Friend is easily scared, thinks there's snakes around every corner, poisonous spiders that'll hunt him down alive, etc., I calm him down and tell him I walked those trails a thousand times, probably actually only ten times. Find some trail that I never followed before. Now the creepy feeling starting to build up on the back of my neck. Ignore it, keep going, I want to see where this trail goes. Friend complains it's creepy, trees, plants are all dead, etc., I tell him it's freaking fall, of course the trees are going to have no leaves and look dead. Actually fall only began, trees are only turning orange slash red and most plants still have leaves. I'm getting scared myself but nothing's happened yet and I wanna explore this new trail. Come across a cabin in the middle of a field of grass. Friend doesn't want to approach it of course. I ignore him and walk boldly ahead. Actually knocked on the door. Nobody answers, I push open the door and I look back. Friend is gone. Hear a scream coming from the cabin. Run the hell away. Look back, cabin door closed while I was looking. Didn't find my friend until next day at school. This time it took place in night. I walk in the woods all the time with my dad, he loves nature. He wants to go again tonight. Both of us bring a flashlight and my dog. Dad is holding the leash instead of letting dog run around cause he doesn't want to lose the dog and have to look for it in the night. He finds the teen hangout spot with the couch and the bike hanging in the tree. Just keeps walking past it casually. Dog is obviously freaking out though. Whining, trying to pull dad away. Dad and I keep looking around for whatever it could be that's freaking out the dog. Dog start barking, we smack the dog to quiet it. Now I can smell wood burning. Ask dad if he smells it too. He nods, but we don't see any fire. Figure maybe someone's smoking or something, but it doesn't smell like that. Whatever we keep walking cuss no flame. I shine my flashlight around, and see two glints appear mid-air off in the distance. Moved my flashlight back, it disappeared, but the bush around it is moving. Pull my dad's arms and whisper what I saw. He shines his flashlight at where I was looking. Doesn't see anything. Dog still refuses to calm down. Half an hour later we hear what sounds like wolves slash coyotes howling. Wolves slash coyotes are rare around here, but they do exist here. It's enough for my dad, we walk back home. Dog starts pulling ahead with all of his might. Slips out of dad's hand, dad and I scream for his name. Too late. He disappeared off in the darkness. We chase after it, calling its name. I look back behind me. I can see a dark shape disappear behind some tree in the moonlight. I look forward and keep running. Dog actually ran all the way back home. Story 4. By the way this took place in early 90s, sorry I didn't have a camera back then. Didn't go in the woods for a while, sat around and played video games. 8. Watch TV, typical Amurafat stuff. Decide to go again one day, probably 11 at the time. I remembered that cabin in the woods, I ask my friend, different friend, if he wants to check it out too. He brings his dog and I bring mine. Walking to where I think the cabin is. 
It's after school but we still have many hours of daylight left. We're just chatting away while our dogs chase and play with each other, run around sniffing, etc. Dogs disappear after a few minutes. We call their names and they come back but then they jog away again, same direction. We follow, find a dead deer with an enormous gut cuss of all of the maggots and juices in it, head is missing. Though. Poke it with stick, typical stuff kids do when they encounter death. Ignore and keep walking. Half an hour later we find another dead one. Again the head is missing. Joke with my friend that deer skulls are used for dark magic. Finally we find the cabin. We're staying off in the distance, but in clearing and in clear view of cabin, debating if we should go check it out or not. After a few minutes see a window curtain move and a shape looking back at us. Friend sees it too. Definitely has a hairy as hell mask, actually looks like deer's head, I didn't make the connection until a year later, we were stupid as hell then, on or something, doesn't look fully human. We stand there not knowing what to do. Figuring cabin moves the curtain back and disappears. Two minutes later another curtain opens this time it's upstairs. Same figure, it stares at us. We're getting nervous about what it's planning on doing but we're too curious to leave. So we just stand there looking at each other for what feels like 10 minutes. Curtain closes and figure disappears again. Now we're getting scared, wondering what it'll do next. We walk back in the woods and hide behind trees while watching the cabin. The cabin door opens. Same figure, with hairy mask. Steps out on the pouch, looking for us. Starts walking towards us. Oh shit oh shit we Usain Bolt for it back home. Later friend tells us we gotta go back there again. I refuse to go back there without my dad. It's a monthish later. We go back with friend's dad and my dad, so four of us, we left the dogs back home because we didn't want them to get hurt. Both dads bought a gun. We lead them to the cabin, midday. Dad outright walks up to it, freak everything else. Knocks on the door, nobody answers so Zed starts to body slam the door. It opens, we all go in and search the whole cabin, nobody's there. Finds alcohol, food, gas, all necessities and cabin. Dad debates burning down the cabin cuz nobody should be running around terrorizing little kids. Decides against it only because ultimately we're little kids, he can't take our words that seriously. As we leave I look back. It's freaking there, curtain open, dear head, everything, staring at us. I pull dad's arm and just points. We all see it. Dad starts walking back to cabin, figure disappears as quickly as it notices us walking back. Cabin door is locked this time. Dad curses and kicks it harder. Dad actually shoots the door handle in desperation. Still doesn't open, freak it, dad breaks window and hops in. We all get in, nothing out of place to be found. We can't all be imagining shit, and we surely didn't lock the door when we left. We leave, this time dad decided we'll spend the night in the cabin at some point later to find this bastard. I'm watching the cabin the whole time. Once again curtains open and the figure is standing there watching us. Still drives me nuts to this day that it can disappear and appear like that. A year later dad still remembers his promise. Makes the preparation to spend a week in the cabin, uses vacation time, everything, he's a determined bastard. Friend, his dad, and the two dogs are coming along too. We actually see the figure upstairs as we're walking towards it. We get to the cabin just before dark and knock on the door, of course we're ignored. Body slam time, breaks open with less effort than last time. We get in, search the whole place, of course nobody's here. Set up camp, water, food, books, guns etc. We all slept together in the living room for protection. Dad decides him and friends dad will take turns staying up. We didn't need to bring a lamp and oil, already was here, we light it and use it throughout the night. We told each other ghost stories and shit like that late into the night. Dog started barking in middle of night. Wake up to find lamp burnt out. 
In the moonlight I could see a figure outside looking in from the window. Freak the hell out, figure disappears under the window behind the wall. Both dads jolts awake and grabs his gun. Nobody else saw the figure, but this time we're more careful, and all of us shared the watch duty this time. Nothing happened for the rest of the night, but holy shit I was still freaking out that it got so close without alerting us. Next day we cooked our food and ate breakfast. Just pretty much a normal camping experience for rest of the day. We stuck together close though. Friend and I went exploring in the woods with my dog, I was entrusted with a gun. Dad and friend's dad kept the other dog. In the hindsight it was a stupid idea to let us back in the woods like that, if you fear for your child's safety so much that you have to give him a gun just don't let him go. So we're walking around following trails, just having fun. Dog is kept on the leash though, because in the back of the minds we are both terrified. Maybe some 20 minutes after exploring we find another dead deer without a head. Man this is getting old I recall my friend saying. For me it was just more evidence that it's still around. We find some stream and throw rocks into it. I set down the gun against a tree and friend let go of the dog to let it run around as we relax and chat about girls. Eventually we can't ignore the creepy feeling anymore. I get my gun and we call the dog over. It doesn't come back. We nervously walk back to the cabin still calling for the dog the whole time. Dad and friend's dad was sitting around in living room with dog resting in between. When we get back dad asked if we found anything interesting. No, but now the dog went missing. He just froze for a moment, I don't think he even breathed. Calmly got up and everybody went looking for my dog. Never came back, we kept looking around until just before dark. We went back in the cabin only to find everything thrashed, all of the water gone, all of the gas was gone, all of the food and bullet was thrown around outside of the cabin and stomped into the dirt, the guns themselves were emptied of bullets, our flashlights were destroyed. Bullets are useless, we don't have any food or water or any light. Shit. We still had a handful of bullets, one gun, and one flashlight that we bought with us when we went looking for the dog. We decide to spend the night in the cabin instead of walking through the woods in the dark with barely any protection. Decide to huddle together again in the living room. This time two out of four people are on watch duty at all time. Nobody slept well that night so really all four of us were awake half of the time. Whenever someone had to use the bathroom we took the dog and the flashlight with us. Late in the night we could hear footsteps in the basement. Dog perked up its ears and I woke up my friend. Dad grabbed his gun and everyone just listened. Sounds like footsteps just walking around. This continues for maybe an hour before Dad decides to go check it out. None of us want him to go alone. We all huddle around him as he holds the gun and slowly opens the door leading downstairs. Everybody get on the floor. Walks the dinosaur. Just kidding perfect time for that though. By the time the door creaks open the footsteps have stopped. Dad actually stands at top of the stairs for what feels like a minute before he took another step. He points down the gun aiming just in case anything wants to jump. All of us step down after him and reach the bottom of the stairs, flashlight searching the whole room. Basement is pretty empty. We checked everything, it's just. Not. There impossible for it to pass us on the stairs. Suddenly we hear footsteps upstairs. What the actual hell, how does it keep disappearing and appearing like that? Dad runs upstairs in rage. We all follow after him trying to stop him. We see the figure already outside, running away into the woods. Dad takes shots at it, then tries to chase after it once the bullets are gone. That ain't happening. JPG. Friend's dad, friend and I all restrain my dad. Dad finally calms down half an hour later. Everyone stayed awake the rest of the night. When the sun was high enough we all headed back home without further incidents. The next day dad and I came back to set the cabin on fire so it had no place to live. Moved away a year later. Friend didn't. Still have more to tell.
Three years later I called my friend to get just to get in touch because we haven't talked to each other in so long. Wasn't long before we started talking about our experience. Friend said he went back a few months after we moved away, said the cabin was still burnt to the ground but something is weird about the cabin, he hesitated to go further. Of course I had to ask what was weird about it. Friend tried to avoid my questions, but I persisted. When he went back, the rubble from the cabin had been rearranged. It now formed a perfect circle of charred pieces around the perimeter of where the cabin stood. Nothing inside this circle except for one solitary thing. Sitting in the middle of the circle was a headless, almost completely decomposed body of an animal. Another deer? I asked my friend. No. He said. Your dog. Be me, in my first year of college and constantly stressing out over petty assignments and other school-related bullshit. Still live with my parents because screw it, why not? Parents live at this lake that's surrounded by a typical Canadian prairie forest. One day I decided to go for a walk out Ena Woods. Uneventful until about an hour in. Trip over something in the grass and land face first in some nettles. Realize that I tripped over a shattered bong covered in a red substance that's obviously blood. Don't think anything of it, just some overzealous natives getting up to their usual shenanigans. I kept walking for a bit, before I noticed a decent sized stack of shoes, that also happened to be covered in what looked like blood and shit. I was freaking stupid then, and I thought that I could possibly find something good out there. Keep following a well trodden trail in the grass, along the way finding more articles of clothing. Find freaking socks and jeans ripped to shreds and tossed haphazardly on the tree branches. As I'm following this clothing trail I finally come to its end, and there's a giant pile of ladies' purses and backpacks that look they've been out there for ages. I rummage around through them, but they've been emptied, and one of them was shat in. Decide that this is the part where it got creepy and nope the hell out of there. On my way home, I heard the strangest sound, like a half-assed attempt to imitate the sound of a quad engine. Probably some freaking wagon burners having a laugh, half the way home I hear this annoying sound coming from all different directions. Screw this shit, I pussied out and sprinted home because from every horror movie ever that's usually a bad sign. And that ladies and gentlemen is my story, interpret it as you will. B7. Play with dad and sister in woods regularly. Be around 6 p.m., getting dark. Dad tells us to go inside like always. After dinner, realize I left a toy outside. Now 8 p.m., pretty dark. I'm really scared of the dark but it's a good freaking toy. Try looking in bushes and under rocks. About to head inside, really sad I lost my toy. I hear a noise, probably an animal but I'm still scared. It's my dad walking out of the woods. Run up to him to tell him I lost my toy. He looks down and just says random gibberish. What? He starts foaming at the mouth, and then collapses on the ground. Scared shitless gif. After 10 seconds he gets up, brushes himself off and asks what I'm doing outside. I don't even know what to do so I just say I accidentally got lost outside. He says okay buddy, don't do that again. Walks back inside house. Find toy a week later under my bed. Alrighty I'll post my in a wood story, I've posted it before but never bothered to save it. This happened almost 5 years ago when I was 16 just outside of Rotorua, New Zealand. The really spooky part actually happened to my friends, I saw nothing, only heard noises and saw the aftermath. B16, on holiday back home from Australia. Staying with my friend for a month, one night he says one of our old friends from primary school, elementary, is having some drinks at his. Say screw it, and go along. He lives just outside of Rotorua on a house with a lot of land, he mostly stays in the big shed about 100 meters from his main house, his parents are gone for a week. We turn up at about 7 and start catching up over a few beers. Terry's about 10 of us. 8 hard ass Maoris, me, not so hard, and one white dude, guy I'm staying with. Now these guys love their weed and are keen to smoke up, I hate the shit so I don't contribute. 
guy whose house it is says he knows a guy about 30 minutes down the road who can sell them some. Since we have all been drinking, and I don't have my license, driving is out of the option. So my friend, we'll call him Peter, decides he's just gonna walk there. By now it's about 9.30, and dark as shit. He goes by himself since everyone else is too lazy. Now this part is through the perspective of my friend when he left. Leave house and start walking to the dealer's place. No lights on the road so all I had was my music. Basically a shit load of trees the whole way to my dealer's house, looks creepy as shit at night but try not to think about it. As I'm walking I hear the odd weird noise here and there, sounds like wailing but I can't tell if it's coming from the woods, my music, or my paranoid imagination. On edge so I start walking faster just to be safe. Finally arrive at dealer's house after so impressive ass power walking. Buy a $75 pack. Ask the dealer if he could drop me home since it's like 10-15 pm at night by now. He says no since he has to work early, says I'm lucky he even sold me this shit in the first place. Start making my way back down that scary ass long street. Don't turn my music on this time because who the hell knows. The entire time walking back I can hear twigs snapping and shit, try to play it off as pigs slash boar or whatever. That's when I realize I don't hear any normal nature noises at all. Like no cricket or cicada noises or anything. Shit. Commence maximum overdrive power walking. Glance out into the trees every so often to see if I can find out what's making all that snapping, so dark I can't see a freaking thing. Still another 20 minutes from the house, feel like this road is never going to freaking end. There is a part of the trees next to the road that suddenly stops and then there's a hill, it's about 100 meters up this thing on a slope, not too vertical at all. As I'm walking past it I notice these two gigantic freaking humanoids standing at the top of it completely still. Hands by their sides, looking right at where I am. Freeze from the fear and complete freaking surprise. Can't make out any features at all, they look completely black. All I know is they were at least 7 foot tall, if not more, and lanky as shit. The only reason I can see them is because of the moonlight illuminating the hill. Really don't know what to do, body is actually not moving no matter how much I want to. They let out a blood curdling scream, get down on their hands and feet and freaking, sprint down this hill like a couple of world class greyhounds. Body is suddenly unfrozen. Sprint back to my house as fast as I possibly can. Legs are basically moving on their own at this point, am crying and it feels like my lungs are filled with ash. Can still hear these things screaming, sounds pretty freaking close and I won't dare turn around. Literally sprint the whole way home with these things in pursuit most of the way. Come to my driveway and pretty sure they stopped, still didn't stop to look. Now back to my perspective. By now it's like almost 11 and we are wondering where the hell Peter is. Just watching Spongebob and the brown boys are starting to get antsy because they really want their weed. My mate says screw it, I'm going to walk down the driveway to see if he is far or not. Literally as he goes to reach for the door Peter comes flying freaking through it, knocking my other mate on his ass in the process. Swear to god he almost knocked the door off its hinges because I'm pretty sure he ran and jumped at it. The sound was so effing loud and gave me the biggest fright. I jumped backwards off the couch like. Everybody in that room was going to freaking explode. Peter turns around and slams the door shut and starts piling shit in front of it and then collapses into a blubbering panicking mess. Everybody is wondering what the hell is going on. Took us a solid 10 minutes to calm him down and ask him what happened, everyone thought the cops were chasing him or something. So in between the odd sob and a cry every now and then he told us the story I mentioned above. Since he's as pale as a freaking bed sheet and on the verge of a mental breakdown we all believe his story. I go around the shed and start closing all the blinds and shit, too scared to look out. One of the more superstitious of my friends, called Junior, starts telling us about some old Maori legends about. Supposed white fairy people who lived on Mount Gangataha near Rotorua until our ancestors killed them all, 
and now their angry spirits haunt the surrounding forested areas. My other mate, Douglas, doesn't buy any of this shit and just says Peter is overreacting. Starts calling him a pussy and whatnot. We tell him to shut the hell up because it isn't helping, Peter is hugging his knees near the TV and is basically unresponsive at this point. Argument breaks out among us as to whatever is out there. I say we should all just stay inside, don't take any chances. My mate him staying with says, let's just forget about all this and smoke a bowl I, come our nurse. Nigareuta firemind that gif. Douglas wants to prove how hard he is and grabs a metal pole from a broken lamp and decides to head outside, calling us, a bunch of drop nut fags in the process. Goes outside and slams the door behind him. No one gets up to check where he goes, but no more than three minutes out there we hear a scream. Then panicked footsteps on gravel before the door comes flying open again. Again I get shit scared and I know for sure the shit is for real. Douglas is breathing heavily and his eyes are as wide as they could go. Then he too gets up and starts chucking more shit in front of the door, even stupid shit like magazine stacks. It's a paranoid freaking mess inside this shed and nobody is loving it. I ask him what he saw and all he said was I got to the end of the driveway and started swinging the pole. Around asking whoever was out there to come out and fight me like a man. Then I heard a PSSSD noise from beside me in the tree line, and I saw a white face, about seven and a bit feet up the tree poking its head out from behind it. It had no hair whatsoever on its head and its smile was so big, so freaking big it wasn't normal. That's when he decided to come racing back up to the shed. We are all running on fear and trying to arm ourselves with whatever in case she hits the fan. Peter finally stops crying and says his dad has a hunting rifle in the main house and suggests one of us go and grab it. Good one Fodge. We decide this is the safest possible place for us under the circumstances. Try and get some sleep. Woken up at about 2 am to Douglas and Peter shaking everyone awake. Terry scratching noises coming from the door and light thumping noises coming from the roof. She fi 5 a. Everyone arms themselves again and basically tries hiding behind one another. Huddle together for a couple hours until the noises stop at about 4 am. Don't sleep for the rest of that and go home as soon as the sun was completely up. I don't know what the hell these things were but all I know is they managed to make all of us fear for our lives. Peter refused to stay there by himself, and ended up just staying with a mate in town for the remainder of the week until his parents came back. Moved all his stuff back into their house too, and lived there until he went to uni in Auckland. Douglas still tries to rationalize what he saw as just his imagination playing up or something, even though we all know he actually believed what he saw he's just in denial I think. I now have a fear about staying on farms near the woods, due to that freaked up experience. My mate I was staying with was pretty unmoved by the whole ordeal, he was mostly gutted that he put in money for the weed but never got any because my mate dropped it while he was running for his life. TL, DR, weed, will get you killed. Couple weeks ago. Live in town near FL slash Ga line called McClenny. Me, BF, three friends go out exploring. Go to this old greenhouse where they've all been, but I haven't. You can just feel the evil inside. Walk through woods to old abandoned family house. Go up front steps. Feel like a mother in scolding me to stay outside. Don't go in. Two days later. Me and older sister go out there, with one of our buddies from the other night. Get to greenhouse. I feel people watching me, mocking and laughing. Freezing. Sussy baka, it is Florida. Sister starts coughing and shit. Sissy I can't breathe, we need to get out of here. Oh Tay. Go to old house. Walk inside. Feel no one there. Feel people all around in the woods. Their spirits must be going about their normal routine. Shit was weird. Here's my story. This is a few years back when I was 13 or so. Be me. In Boy Scouts. Going on a camping trip with my troop. 
it's somewhere in Connecticut, and it's far away from the other campsites. Get there. Unload shit. Walk to site. Start setting up stuff, put our sleeping bags in lean-to. For those who don't know, a lean-to is a very small cabin with a roof, side and rear walls, but the front has no wall so you can see right out. After we collect firewood, we get ready to sleep. Get settled, sitting there in my sleeping bag for a while. All the people around me are fast asleep. Still awake because insomnia. Also, I should say that a few meters to the left is the troop leader cabin, where the adults were sleeping. Suddenly, everything goes quiet. There's a highway overpass down the trail so I can hear care all night too. Cars, crickets, random wood noises stop. Dead silence. Fog starts to form around the lean to ofreak.avi. Loud bang is heard from the left wall. A yellow shit. Wakes everybody up. Another bang. Kids scream. The adult cabin lights flash on. Another bang. We all nope the hell out of the lean to and stand around the fire pit. Freeze in shock. There's a silhouette in the fog of a man holding an axe. One adult comes out and starts yelling at the guy to piss off and get out of here. Other adults start running out of the cabin. All the kids, me included, run to another lean to, which is to the right of ours. Guy starts screaming we got him. Freaking loud yell. More screaming from adults. One guy takes out a gun and shoots. Guy then runs off into the forest. All of the kids are huddled, scared as freak. Pack up our shit and get out. Never go back. To this day I have no clue who the guy was. The banging were caused by the short logs that were scattered around, he was throwing them at the side. Shit still gives me chills thinking about it. A story my grandfather told me as a child, one that took place when he was young. He's 10-ish. Lives upstate Michigan, in the middle of tit nowhere. House is surrounded by heavy woods. Goes for walks through it all the time. One day, gets kind of lost. Embarrassed, and disappointed I imagine, he begins looking for his way back. Getting dark. Notices something seems to be following nearby. Find a familiar path back. Uneasy, begins to hurry back. Gets a ways down, almost out. Hears that something again. Turns around. Nothing. Keeps at it, the clearing up ahead. Something close behind him. Turns again. Fox humanoid thing standing a few feet away on path, human shape, he said it had feet, fingers, hands, and the works, fox-like face. What? It makes a raspy chuckling sound. It lunges towards him. He turns and books it down the path. The whole time he can hear it laughing between strides. Makes it out. It's gone. Never tells parents. Never sees it again never walks in the woods again. This is my first green text story so be gentle. It's completely true. B19 still in high school. On a camping trip in Kentucky with group from school. Me, four other students, two teachers. Stay at campground for a few days. Go on hikes and shit, see Mammoth Cave, pretty sweet. Now for the reason we came here. Canoe down the Green River for a few days while camping on the small islands. Can't remember what happened on which night so I'll put it in the order I feel like. First night, freaking sore because the bitch I was canoeing with didn't pull her weight. I think I was one of the few who knew how to set up a tent. Second night, this is where it gets interesting. We stop at an island to set up camp. Already a tent there, looks like it's been there for maybe a week at most. Partially collapsed, sleeping bag and other supplies still in there soaked. Cue banjo. Still stay on that island. Trying to sleep in tent, a loud noise comes from the distance, Sounds like screams at first. Freaking birds, not sure what kind their calls were hard to describe. MFW footsteps around the tent scariest moment in my life right there. But it was probably a deer. Effing nature. The rest of the trip went pretty normal. Be like 18 years old. 
Friend and I live out in the country. Going through forest to gather wood. We're finished and on our way back. Suddenly blizzard. It gets really bad. Like really really bad. Like, it feels like we're being stabbed with knives made out of ice, bad. We aren't going to make it back home. We find an abandoned cabin in the woods. Doors open. Don't care about trespassing because no one's around and we don't want to die. Go inside to keep warm. It doesn't help much. We go from, feeling like ice knives are stabbing us, to, just being completely numb all over. We can't start a fire or do anything else. We just keep our jackets wrapped around us and try to get warm. Eventually we pass out. I wake up some time later. Don't know how long it's been. There is now a third person in the room with us. Freaking pale woman with white robes. I must be seeing things. Bits of snow and hail form wherever she breaths. She starts breathing on my friend. I can't quite tell but his skin looks really off color. What the actual hell? Freaky woman turns around. She's looking right at me. I still have no idea who this person is but I'm getting really freaked out. She makes a shh motion at me by putting her finger on her lips. She leaves without another word. I don't even know what that was about but I'm still numb from the cold. I fall back asleep. I wake up later. Friend is still asleep. Try to wake him up. It's not working. He feels really cold. I'm getting really worried now. Walk home alone. Try to get help once I get back to civilization. Medics come. Tell me he froze to death. I was sick for a while after that, but I got better. I never figured out who slash what that woman was, but I still miss my friend sometimes. Wouldn't call it an inner wood story but it happened out of my house at night near woods so. Be about 5 years ago, I was in high school and it was a school night. About 11.30 at night me and my mom and sister see someone walking up road. It's this lady with this messed up hair. Just walking really slowly up the hill of a road we lived on holding something. Finally near streetlight about 200 yards from our house. She's holding like a five freaking foot python. We look at each other like what in the hell. She almost gets to top of hill. Suddenly a jeep with like three guys in it flies up road slams on brakes right next to her. They start yelling at her and she yells back. Can't understand what they're saying. They drive away then turn around and drive back down our road. She turns around and walks back down our road and into the darkness at the end of the road. Have no freaking clue what that was about, maybe drugs or a goddamn a lot of booze but who the hell carries a snake while walking on the street at midnight. Also like I said her hair, it was like a foot off her head in every direction what you would expect a stereotypical witch to have. Then those guys yelling at her making her turn around? Shit was effing weird. Be me. Be like, 12 or something. Have friend who owns a farm, huge property. Woods. So much woods. I really liked going for walks, so go over to her house with two other friends, Nick and Kale. Girl who owned the farm's name was Diane, and she was really good friends with Kale. Everyone knew each other. Go for walk back in the woods there. Huge ravine-like area, huge for a 12-year-old anyway. Come across a river. We walk along it. I slip down the mud, jokingly walk the rest of the way with the water up to around my waist. Keep walking, other three friends are still in the mud, I eventually go up there as well. Come to an area with a larger area where we can stand all together easily. See something up ahead on the other side, vultures. Hey, let's see what they're eating. Walk ahead some, see a dead looking freaking alligator on its back. Nope nope open nope. Hear screaming, probably a fox though, but I was 12 and freaking stupid. Almanope.mp3 Knowing I could gotten eaten, freaking Florida, man. I have another Boy Scout story. Not as bad though. If anything it was a bit odd. This was a year ago when I was 17. Be me again. In cabin with friends. Scout leaders are there, but I see one slip out the door. Nice try faggoty, I saw you. I think Hess gonna play a prank or some shit. 
Nothing happens for about five minutes. Then I hear my car alarm go off. I have a loud air horn installed so I can hear it well. Also the cabin we were in is across a huge lake from the lot, so it's a few minutes walk. One scoutmaster yells, Anon. Go shut that off. Run out of cabin and walk to the lot. Get there and decide to bring car up to the cabin cause why not. Get in and start it up. Start driving to the cabin. Roll the window down to hear my exhaust. This is where it gets weird. I hear some movement in the trees. Animals reacting to the car, no biggie. Starts to get louder and closer. I tap the horn to scare off the thing. It's still coming. I floor it. Look in rear view mirror. I see this person jump out of the bushes. Dirty clothes and wild hair. Nope. Get to cabin. Get in trouble for honking. I also noticed the guy who left had come back before I did. In the morning I checked out that area and I see there was a campsite in the bush but no people. It could have been a person who was there that night cause the fire pit was smoldering. Not something that'll keep you up all night by weird nonetheless. I also don't know what set my car's alarm off either. Camping with friends at night. Go out to piss. Something grabs me from behind and covers my mouth. Wriggle violently because I forgot how to kick or punch. Eventually suffocation sets in. Wake up. It's still night. Run to where I think camp is. Can't see camp anymore. Stumble around for a good 20 minutes. Find camp. Wake my friends up. Tell them we have to get the hell out of here. They ask why. There's a murderer and he almost killed me. We get the hell out of there. Drive away at 120 miles per hour. Tell them I got choked out and ask if they saw anything. They ask when I was choked out. I tell them it was right after I took a piss. They say that's bullshit, you came back right after. Oh shit. Ask them what I did. They say you just sat there, you cracked a smile a couple of times, that was it. When we went to our tents you. Were gone, so we thought you were sleeping. Never camp there again. Never talk to anyone about it. Shit immense bricks for the rest of my life. Not really an inner wood story, because I was in my house at the time, but some of this thread reminded me of this. I live up on a hill with the edge of the woods not 50 yards away, so I kinda live on a edge of our woods, if that counts. Anyway, this was a few years back, in like 2004 to 2005, during the early summer before it got really hot. Be 15 to 16 years old because of summertime birthday. It's 2 in the morning, and I'm in my room, in my underwear, reading scary stuff that was linked by slash x slash. Get strange urge to open the curtains and look out the window. Edge of the porch light abruptly stops at a tree that I know it should have been able to cast light past. See something moving in the odd shadows caused by the abrupt, edge, that the light has. Something glints just a bit in the dark, like an eye, or a piece of glass. Edges of whatever it is look like a huge black cat, about the size of a panther or other big cat. No eye reflections, though, which all cats have, and would have been visible. Starting to nope, don't take eyes off of whatever I'm seeing. Sudden, sharp pain in left side of chest, quickly spreading into shoulder. Yank curtains shut, sit down on edge of bed, suddenly out of breath. Holding chest and shoulder as I'm panting. Check, and there's a striped red mark on my shoulder down to my chest. Whole thing couldn't have taken more than, maybe, 10 minutes. Look at clock, which reads 4.45. Nope. Open curtains again, just a bit. Light is casting past the edge of the tree it couldn't pass before. Noping kinda hard. Turn computer off, lay down in bed, staring at ceiling until sun comes up. Take dogs out, walk around in the area the thing was. No tracks, but a lot of scuffed dirt, like there was a straight up, rolling on the ground fist fight there recently. Mom rolls up after just getting off of work at 6 am. Tried to explain what happened. She treats me like I'm 5 and tells me I had a nightmare. Claims marks on my shoulder are where I slept on it wrong. Tell her that I haven't slept yet, at all tells me that I'm either wrong, 
or I'm high. Starts interrogating me on whether I've been smoking, popping pills, or shooting up. Tell her she's being an idiot and go to bed, only able to sleep now that the sun's up. Haven't been able to sleep right for the last decade. Clocking in 8-10 hours a night, minimum, starting at 2 in the morning or later unless someone wakes me up. I don't, and never have, smoked pot or taken any pills not prescribed to me. In addition, I have a severe phobia of needles resulting from when I was very young and had pneumonia, which came with an 4 in my arm that I kept pulling out. Here's a story about my granddad's encounter with a bunyip. 1940s. Granddad's cousin comes visiting from Scotland and they decide to go fishing in the bush. They reach the normal fishing spot granddad sets up while his cousin looks around for fauna and such. David come look at this seal. Looks over to the far size of the creek on the shore. Huge gray seal twice the size of a horse with a flat oval face and big red eyes. Starts barking something that sounds like, feed feed. They both run like hell. Grand's cousin falls and breaks his arm. Make it back to town. Few days later a dozen of Grand's father-in-law's sheep have gone missing. Anyway that's pretty much how dad told me it, granddad died when I was two. Here goes nothing. Thirteen-ish. Went to camp trip in a wood somewhere. Fast forward to night activities which one of them is trekking. Two person in a group. Trekking into the wood by following some noticeable road track but still very dark. Hearing noises in the bushes. Friend, do you hear that? G's teachers being tryhard to scared us. Friend was like murmur something gibberish. Hearing louder noises than before like really right besides us in the thick bushes. Can't see anything, yet getting chill bill. G's what do they want? Friend stop walking and stare at my face. Maybe they want you anon. Suddenly creepy grin. Reached checkpoint. Teacher stared at me and pulled me away. Almost seems nervously. The dafuk anon. Why the hell you walking in a wood alone? Tefuk. I'm not alone, I'm with friend no anon. You're alone. Talking and laughing alone. Tefuk. You saw me in a group with friend, we went in together. Teacher went silenced and called the night activities off. And do this counting routine which later we heard that Terry's been extra person that night but no one can point out who. Apparently there's no one remember or see me going in with friend. And friend herself claimed that she never went in with me since she too sacred to went in the dark woods. have some fresh OC, op. Story goes, the gate. So this story is mainly an urban legend, however neither proof for nor against any alleged actions have ever been found. Case in point, the location of this haunted area, is smack dab in the middle of upper middle class America, I live in the second wealthiest county in my state, in pretentious suburbia. There have been other murders and conspiracies notorious in my town, however it does its best to cover its ass and keep information hidden. That being said, take what you want from my green text. But I'll tell you all I know. The Gate The story goes that our town had an all-girls finishing school back in the 50s. The dean of the institution snapped, and murdered four of the students, dismembering their heads, and posting them on the front gate of the property grounds. Since then, the school has been demolished and a forest has overgrown the area. The local county adopted this property as part of their preserves, and are accessible to citizens. The gate, is located off a low-key back road, on the northeast side of the property, and is visible from the street. The actual remaining foundation, is about two miles deep through dense forest, and not many people can claim to have actually been there. I'll continue, if interested. I think I have pictures somewhere too. Holy shit so. I found some old photos, and imagine MFW I'm accidentally zoomed in all the way on this freaking spot. Pick unrelated to this section of the story it's also probably nothing, was just a spook. Lel. Continuing on. B2 summers ago. Friends and I can't think of anything to do, dare hair ghost hunt. There's no parking, but rather there's a neighborhood less than a quarter mile away, so we parked there. 
In my car alone, there were only three people, including myself. Someone sat passenger, and behind me. We meet up with three other car fulls of people, I'd say there were probably 12 to 13 of us total. We got there about an hour before the sun went down, so I was able to grab some photos, but the ones I have are from of the end of the line. None of the trail on forch, sorry. First walking up to the gate, a bunch of girls in the group start getting freaked out. Nope, we can't go further. Everyone else is not having it, we're here, you're either coming as a group, or going back to wait at the car alone. They decide to stop whoring for attention and join the line. We walked on the forest preserve trails until we ended a fence, which we hopped it into the woods. From this point, it was all single file. We march forward, and the first unusual thing I found, was this giant ass tree that was nearly gnawed through at the base. Now this tree, was freaking huge. Easily over 60 tall. Thway width of the trunk had to have been at least 12 around. And at the base of the tree, there was about a 2 clearance, with the exception of a remaining 1 to 2 inches at the trunk. Like when I really noticed this bastard I freaked out. Oh shit watch out. We kept going, and came to this really odd clearing. There was an open area, with 6 trees lined up along the sides. We found about 8 trash bags full of mostly unidentifiable material, some were identified, but for the most part it almost looked like brown ash. This is odd but whatever. Keep going. We keep trekking on, and we get to this field of tall prairie grass. We trek through it, and once the last girl gets to the other side, she screams. We all turn around. What's wrong? She's pointing up, and I swear to God there was a freaking noose in the tree. At this point, we're about a mile into the journey, maybe a little less than halfway. All the girls freak out, and turn back. A couple guys went with them too. Only four of us continuing on now. Come on, I want to see some evidence. Another half mile of uneventful woods, we come across this pile of bed springs and metal. This area we were it had a bunch of really random things. I found a bit of a porcelain toilet rim, an old vial with, unknown, liquid in it, a piece of a plate, and some roofing tiles. But still no sign of any kind of foundation or structure nearby. Yet. The closer we got, we started noticing some trees with unusual scorch marks. Now, I'm no environmental biologist or anything, so I have no idea what exactly the burning slash weeding process is, but to my knowledge they burn complete areas respectively. And not just scorning half of a tree, on random trees, within a quarter mile radius of this epicenter that we found. The epicenter, as I call it, just had the only significant signs of a building that we found anyways. We found some large log beams lined up perfectly across the clearing, along with this weird structure, can anyone possibly enlighten what this might have been? See pick. I have some pics of the trees too. I figured this was probably as good as we were gonna get. The sun was starting to go down, so we decided to head back. I snap my last pick, and turn around to head back toward the gate. This time, the guys were ahead of me. I wanna say I felt something was present but it could have just been a chill in the air. We marched back the 1.5 miles and found the rest of the gang hanging out under this canopy. You're all still here? Yeah we found this cool area, here have a drink. I relay the pictures and evidence we found, as the guys tell me that they convinced the girls to drink their fear away. We drink about an hour into sundown, and things seem pretty well. Until we saw a light coming toward us in the distance. Who's that? Who would be out in the preserve this late at night? IDK maybe other teens? No seriously, it's coming right toward our group. No one had anything illuminating on them at this time, and it was already so dark that we could hardly see anything beyond 10 feet away from the group. It could be a cop. A lot of the guys start to freak out, oh let's move out etc. Until I speak up, in a loud whisper, everyone just shut the hell up and listen for a second. We all are looking at each other. Dead silence amongst us. I freaking hear it. The two people next to me heard it too. It was a soft, whisper of a little girl. Do you think they can see us? The three of us immediately turn around. I swear I saw a shadow move between a couple of the trees. 
one of the anons that heard it did anyone else freaking hear that? Someone, who didn't hear the whispers, disregarded everything because she was too fixated on the light still. Guys, it's a lantern. What? It's not a flashlight. It's a hanging lantern. Look at the way it's moving. She was right. It was a controlled ball light that was swaying back and forth gently while moving forward. While I'm looking at the light, three different people are claiming to hear whispers as well. They're getting louder. We need to get out of here. Wait where's an on? One of the guys in the group goes AWOL. And OFC it's the freakiest guy in the group. We can't leave without looking for him. I honestly was okay with the idea of leaving him. But being the good guy I am okay, you guys go on ahead. I'll stay and look. Everyone runs back to the cars from this point, except my main bro. I'm here for you man. Thanks bro. My bro and I head back toward the foundation. We get to the clearing with the trash bags again, and stop in the middle. My bro looks at me with the look of of God, please don't suggest we split up. Let's go this way instead. We take a different path, and end up finding this little hidden pond between the trees. Shit did you notice this before? Nope. Um. There he is. On the other side of the pond. I shout out to him, Anon, what the hell are you doing? He keeps walking past as if he didn't hear me. My bro and I start running toward his direction, hoping to meet up with him. We get to the other end of the pond, and he's nowhere to be found. WTF, he was just here. We keep walking north, when all of a freaking sudden he pops out from one of the trees, all freaking nonchalant as if he was just on a casual stroll. WTF man? Everyone else went back to the cars. Where the hell did you come from? We just saw you back there. How'd you get in front of us? He doesn't say a freaking word and keeps walking back south past us. I'm fuming, because screw this kid. Hello? Did you even see or hear anything? He keeps walking and quietly says. I know everything. This kid is seriously freaking us out. Well, let's just get back to the cars now, yeah? Bro yeah. There's only one more part after this. Here's a pic of some of the scorched trees. My bro and I walk behind the guy, making sure he didn't make any other detours. We make it out of the woods, and from the point, Freak it let's just get out of here and start running back to the cars. Freak continues to walk, I turn back occasionally to make sure he was following, he was. We make it back up to the gate, and I notice that the iron posts are leaking of something. Not staying to investigate. We get to the road, and run up until the halfway point between the gate and the neighborhood entrance. Across the street from this point of the road, is a huge field of prairie grass. Bro and I stop to gaze at a white figure walking through the field. It looked like a headless figure, wearing a long white flowing dress the freaky guy passed us at this point as we just stopped to stare, making sure we both could clarify what we saw. We get back into the neighborhood, and meet the rest of the gang by the entrance. We all walk back to the cars together. The backseat passenger side door of my car is completely ajar. Nobody sat there coming here. I had the keys the entire time. I distinctly remember turning back to double check doors slash locks before we left for this whole ordeal. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever went to these woods, 